since I was a little girl growing up in England, I've loved to sew. My mum was a home economics teacher, so she taught me to sew using her 1964 Bonina record. It's a great little machine. And I think all it did was a straight stitch and a zigzag, nothing complicated, but perfect for making clothes, doing lots of home deck projects, pillows, cushions, curtains, and just had a ton of fun. By the time I was 18, my mum was so fed up with me using her sewing machine that she decided I needed my own and she bought me an 80, a Benina 801 Sport for my 18th birthday and that had the great straight stitch in a zigzag but it also had some really fun decorative stitches on there too so I had a ton of fun playing with those. Um, I made a going away outfit for my sister when she got married and we made her a little necktie to go with it and used the decorative stitches around the edge and that was really fun. Also um, used to go to a hairdresser who decided that he was going to go out on his own. He opened his own salon up and asked me if I would make some new gowns for him. So we made grey gowns with a little tiny touch of pink piping on them for the guys and of course pink with a little tiny touch of grey piping on them for the girls and they were fun, everybody loved them and I think they were in use for quite a number of years. I ended up going to the University of Brighton in England and eventually earned myself a PhD in computer science. I worked as a software engineer for about two and a half years in England and didn't so much like being a software engineer. The only girl in the company, the most highly qualified, didn't really end up being a really great combination and I found an opportunity to come over to the United States to volunteer at a place called the Option Institute in Massachusetts and gave up my job in England packed a suitcase, got on a plane. I had, I think it was $1,500 in my pocket um, to last me for six months volunteering at this place. I had a ton of fun. Eventually decided that I should probably go back home to England and figure out how I could come back to the United States permanently um, and actually earn a living again. So I went back home, I put my resume out on the internet and it took about four weeks for somebody to find me, offer me a job, got the whole visa situation sorted out and January 10th, 1998, I got on a plane and came over to the United States. I wound up in Phoenix, Arizona as a software engineer for a consulting company and eventually met Christopher, who I married and we got pregnant with our first daughter, Heather. My brain did a complete flip, kind of the right, left brain. And um, I, I used to be a really analytical left brain type, you know, the whole computer science thing growing up. And the whole creative thing of getting pregnant, my right brain suddenly started shouting, let me out, let me out. <laughs> and I went to work one day and I looked at what I was working on, I'm like, this makes absolutely no sense to me at all. I have no clue. So, as a pregnant, soon to be new mom in Albuquerque, I did a lot of knitting and did a lot of crocheting. My mom's mom had taught me to do that when I was much younger, and it was a really nice thing to be able to do with my hands, make little tiny, um, little tiny sweaters, like about that big, for my soon to be baby. Um, when she was born, she turned out to be a really good sleeper. She would sleep two hours straight and I would sit and sew for two hours straight while she was sleeping. I uh, made her lots of tiny baby clothes using a borrowed sewing machine. Um, and then one day the person I borrowed the sewing machine from decided they wanted it back and I'm like, no, don't take it. I, um, I gotta have a sewing machine. <laughs> and so. I went out looking and this was the first time that I had ever seen a quilt before, at least one that was more of an art, a piece of art rather than just a thing on a bed. Um, so I saw quilts for the first time and I saw embroidery machines and I so wanted to be able to make quilts and I wanted to do the free motion quilting on them. And I figured that looks so hard, I'm never gonna be able to do that. But if you give me a piece of software that I can program this embroidery machine, I can make the embroidery machine do the quilting for me. And that lit my fire in a big way. So I ended up with a brand new embroidery machine. And of course it was a Benina because they're the best. And I had some digitizing software. So using my computer skills, I can use the software 
make the embroidery machine do exactly what I want it to. Um, now in the beginning it turned out that quilting wasn't such a great plan. I was working with a hoop that was about that big and um, not, not such a great plan but as my love of quilting grew and I found out more about it and I discovered more different styles. I discovered applique thanks to Ricky Timms and his quilts which I adore and I started playing with my embroidery software. There was a new release out and I started playing with some of the amazing stitches in the new release of the embroidery software and working with applique shapes and that's where I found my signature style embroidered applique. Applique done using your embroidery machine but you're not just finishing the edge with a satin stitch or a blanket stitch. I'm using thread and embellishment on the top of the applique shape so that for instance you could take a simple heart outline and create a whole secondary design on the surface of that using thread and the stitches in your embroidery machine. And the thing that I think is just so amazing about this is that I can do it and create the design and then somebody else who maybe doesn't have the technical skills with the software can take advantage of that because if I give you the design on a stick then you can do it too. So in 2008 I now had Heather uh, who was six and Jasmine who had just turned two and I found myself a single mom and for uh, the most part in 2008 we'd moved back to Phoenix from this time from Albuquerque and I was doing a little bit of teaching um, teaching free motion quilting which I did actually learn how to do uh, not just relying on my embroidery machine to do it for me and teaching my signature embroidered applique technique um, living off some investment income which come December of 2008 kind of fizzled out um, check didn't come Everybody kept saying, oh, it'll be there in January, it'll be there in January. January came, no check. So now I'm on the phone with my dad who's telling me, Sarah, you really need to go back to work and get a proper job as a software engineer. And I'm like, I don't think so. Um, did not have any desire. And I'd been a, a stay-at-home mom all, uh, all of Heather's life. Um, I really had no desire to go back to work in the corporate environment. You may as well just shot me right then and there instead of making me go and sit back in a cubicle again. Um, I got, it, it gave me the opportunity to get really clear about what I wanted and that was to be available for my kids, to see them growing up and to do work, earn a living doing something which completely nourished me at a soul level. So I got really clear about what my purpose in life is and that is to create beauty, inspiration, and infinite creative joy. And I decided, okay, I love making quilts. I love designing quilts. That is how I'm gonna earn my living. I'm gonna be a quilt designer featuring embroidered applique. So in 2009, I founded Sarah Vedler Designs, um, creating designs using my specialized technique, embroidered applique, using the embroidery machine to do applique. Um, specifically on quilts. Uh, I, I just love quilts and the different things that you can do with them. Having made the decision that my purpose in life is to create beauty, inspiration and infinite creative joy and I was going to do that through the channel of creating embroidered applique, applique designs for quilters, I met the right people. I, just seemed that everything in the universe conspired to put me in the right place at the right time to see the right person who would help me get to the next step and amazing things happen i had a ton of fun creating new design collections bonina came out with a brand new machine the 830 and they had the jumbo hoop with that and one of the things that totally turns me on is give me a bigger hoop on my embroidery machine and let me see what I can do with it. So the jumbo hoop on the 830 was a really big um, impetus for me to create bigger designs, see what I could do in the hoop, see what I could do that was bigger than the hoop and how we could um, use the technology to create amazing, beautiful, inspirational quilts and designs.
I love embroidered applique because you can do things with the embroidery machine that you couldn't necessarily, well you certainly couldn't do by hand and for the most part you couldn't do it with a regular sewing machine either. Um, you, can, you can create the most gorgeous textures, the most intricate stitches. I can do things with the embroidery machine that I couldn't otherwise do. Um, one of the things that I absolutely love to do is share my designs with other people that maybe don't know how to use software, maybe they're not so comfortable with their embroidery machine, but they see a design or they see a quilt and they think, I want to do that, I want to make that, and using my designs, you can absolutely go do that. I love it when people take my designs and they put their own style on it. They use their own colors, they use their own fabric choices, they use their own threads, you know, so they're making the same quilt or using the same embroidery designs, but they're coming out with something that's completely different and unique to them. And I, I just love it when I see something that I can say, oh, that's one of my design collections or that's one of my quilts, but it's got an individual stamp on it that makes it belong to you. So you got an embroidery machine, you got my designs, you can make amazing things.